We begin with that thunderbolt of a ruling from the Colorado State Supreme Court saying in no uncertain terms the disgrace, twice impeached, four times indicted ex-president is constitutionally disqualified from being on the ballot for the Republican primary in that state. The ruling clocks in at over 200 pages and it pulls no punches, starting with what they had to say about Trump's role on January 6th. Quote, President Trump incited and encouraged the use of violence and lawless action to disrupt the peaceful transfer of power. The tenor of President Trump's messages to his supporters in exhorting them to travel to Washington, D.C. on January 6 was obvious and unmistakable. The allegedly rigged election was an act of war, and those victimized by it had an obligation to fight back and to fight aggressively. And President Trump's supporters did not miss or misunderstand the message. The cavalry was coming to fight. Now, that part of the ruling upheld a lower court's finding, but here's where the Colorado State Supreme Court went further, reversing the lower court's finding that Donald Trump doesn't qualify as a, quote, officer under Section 3 of the 14th Amendment. As our audience well knows, Section 3 of the 14th Amendment is a Civil War-era amendment to the Constitution whose aim was to prohibit loyalists to the Confederacy who taken an oath to support the Constitution from taking various state and federal offices. Well, Colorado State Supreme Court ruled that Trump is an officer and quoted, among others, the Founding Fathers to back that up. Writing, quote, Americans have referred to the president as an officer from the days of the founding fathers. This is seismic. This is unprecedented. And this is very, very likely destined to go before the Supreme Court. And none of that is lost on the Colorado State Supreme Court. With a nod to the historic nature of this ruling, they write, quote, We do not reach these conclusions lightly. We are mindful of the magnitude and weight of the questions now before us. We are likewise mindful of our solemn duty to apply the law without fear or favor, without being swayed by public reaction to the decisions that the law mandates we reach. We are also cognizant that we travel in uncharted territory. Uncharted territory indeed. Now, importantly, the Colorado State Supreme Court paused their ruling until January 4th, making way for Donald Trump to appeal to the Supreme Court, something his team has said that they will do, quote, swiftly. When that happens, well... All eyes will be on the Supreme Court. And that is where we start today with the leading voices on this topic. Former federal judge Michael Ludig and former acting U.S. Solicitor General Neil Katyal. Gentlemen, thank you both so much for being with us, Judge Ludig. You know, Nicole likes to say you are a conservative's conservative. You were shortlisted for the Supreme Court by George W. Bush. Conservatives, they look to you for guidance, including famously VP Mike Pence, turned to you when Donald Trump was pressuring him to interfere with the election results. We are, of course, hearing criticisms of this ruling from the right. It's worth remembering this legal argument originated with conservative scholars like you. Judge, why is this ruling consistent with conservative legal thought? Thank you for having me with you this afternoon, Alicia. Uh, the Colorado Supreme Court yesterday decided uh, the, the most consequential and pressing constitutional issue facing the country. Uh, its decision uh, will uh, force the nation to decide, does it believe in American democracy, its constitution, and the rule of law? The Supreme Court of Colorado uh, issued what I have characterized as a masterful judicial opinion. It is unassailable and irrefutable in every single respect. Uh, as your viewers already know, that court held that first, and importantly, that Section 3 of the 14th Amendment does apply to presidents of the United States. The lower court had held that it did not. In that holding, the Supreme Court of Colorado held first that the presidency is an office under the United States. Second, that the president is an officer of the United States. And third, that uh, the president, when he takes the constitutionally prescribed oath as president, he takes an oath to support the Constitution of the United States 
uh, within the meaning of uh, uh, Section 3 of, of the 14th Amendment. Uh, this is uh, uh, an historic decision. It's of monumental significance to the nation today. And when the Supreme Court eventually decides uh, the, the case, it will be perhaps one of, if not the single most important consequential decision in American history. Uh, I, I believe that the Supreme Court of the United States, when and if it takes this particular case, uh, should affirm the Colorado Supreme Court's decision. Uh, I, I believe that based on the objective law, which in this instance is Section 3 of the 14th Amendment, uh, there is no uh, other decision that the Supreme Court could make. Neil, I have two questions about timeline here. The Colorado State Supreme Court has stayed its ruling until January 4th. If Donald Trump appeals to the Supreme Court, she says he'll do, Trump's name, it stays on the ballot. How does that work? Yeah, so I think it'll, what will happen is that right now the, effect, the ruling yesterday has no immediate legal effect. And as long as Donald Trump appeals, it won't have a legal effect, and his name will be on the ballot until uh, the United States Supreme Court rules and affirms the Colorado Supreme Court. And I agree with Judge Ludic that I think that the case for them doing that is exceptionally strong. I mean, it's obviously a solemn moment. It's also a horrendous moment. We're only in this situation because Donald Trump is an insurrectionist, and he has a party behind him that hasn't, you know, come to grips with that. And, you know, people like me who really hope that we would just have the chance to beat him at the ballot box, we won't necessarily have that chance because of the language of the 14th Amendment, which is as clear as day that insurrectionists can't hold office. And this ruling yesterday, Alicia, is no more surprising than if the Colorado Supreme Court said Arnold Schwarzenegger is removed from the ballot for being president because you have to be a natural born citizen and Schwarzenegger's not. It's the same thing. They're just a limited handful of minimal qualifications to be president. You got to be 35, natural born citizen, not an insurrectionist. And Donald Trump hasn't managed to do that, which is why we're in this horrendous situation. Now, what he's saying is, well, let the people decide, which is funny because that's, of course, not what he did in 2020 when he tried to launch the coup. But I think the more important answer to that is that the writers of the 14th Amendment already, already wrote an answer to that exact concern, because what they said is that Congress can lift any disability of someone being labeled an insurrectionist and allow that person to run. And if Donald Trump can convince the Congress that he's not an insurrectionist, which after all is not all that hard for you and me and normal people, then you know he can be on the ballot. But up and until that point, I think the Colorado Supreme Court decision should stand. Okay, so that was one question about timeline. Neil, your sense, should the Supreme Court decide to take this up, how quickly we will see that happen? I think it will happen very quickly. The U.S. Supreme Court is capable of acting with a remarkable speed. I mean, Bush versus Gore was 36 days start to finish. I suspect this can be on a very similar timeline. The court actually has a, a long recess right now. It's kind of their winter break of about six weeks, seven weeks, where they're not even hearing oral argument. And so there's a lot of time in the calendar for them to get ready to hear this case, to hear this case, and then ultimately to decide it. Judge Ludig, I wonder what we should make of the fact that this ruling very deliberately cites Neil Gorsuch. Gorsuch, of course, once sat on the Colorado State Supreme Court himself. Does that make it harder for him to vote to overturn this ruling? Uh, Alicia, first, first let me uh, add uh, to, to Neil's discussion this this point. Uh, there's already in the in the relatively few hours since the the decision was issued. Uh, a, a hue and cry uh, by uh, the partisan political uh, people uh, in our nation that the, the decision is anti-democratic. Uh, it is not anti-democratic. The Constitution itself tells us that the disqualification or the possible disqualification of the former president is not what's anti-democratic. Rather, the Constitution tells us 
It is the conduct that can give rise to disqualification under the 14th Amendment that is anti-democratic. So, in other words, the framers of, our, uh, of the 14th Amendment and Section 3 in particular, on behalf of the American people, wrote into the American people's Constitution that disqualification should follow upon uh, an insurrection or rebellion by one who has previously taken the oath to support the Constitution. As to your, your question about uh, Justice Gorsuch, uh, I, I will not comment uh, on uh, the position that it places uh, Justice Gorsuch in. Uh, that would be inappropriate. Uh, I will just say to you and your viewers that um, the, 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 the fact that Justice Gorsuch, when he was a judge, circuit judge, decided the case that he did that's referenced in the Colorado Supreme Court opinion is relatively inconsequential to the decision of, of this uh, final decision mm -hmm. of, of this case.